a Lord, make me a learner. And we're coming from um, Matthew chapter 28, if you have your Bibles. Um, Matthew chapter 28. This is the year, this is the year. the year A.D. between A.D. 30-33. Uh, this, is, uh, this is the Lord Jesus after he was put to death on the cross. The Lord was put to death on the cross. Put to death on the cross. Matthew 28, the Gospel of Matthew 28, we started at 16. Jesus has been put to death at the cross. He was dead. How many days? Remember, he was dead for three days. On the third day, on the third day, third day, he was what? Resurrected. Okay. Resurrected. Oh, Amen. Resurrected from the dead. From the dead. Then after his resurrection, he appears to his apostles. My Lord, I erased all this. All right. He appears to his apostles in Matthew chapter, chapter number, chapter number 28, chapter 28. Matthew chapter 28, we start at verse 16. In verse 16, chapter 28, verse 16. As I stated, AD 20, between AD 30 was his crucifixion. And on the third day, he rose from the dead because Jesus is the founder of the church. He, okay, he found the church on his death. His death. Amen. Because Jesus died and, re and, and was buried on the third day, he rose from the dead. Amen. He's talking about, he's referring to those who are going to listen to this message is those who belong to his family. If you don't belong to God's family, it has no relevancy to you. You have to believe in the death, the burial, and the resurrection of Jesus. And after he rose from the dead, he appears to his apostles. 11 of them, 11 apostles, uh, and they were disciples first. <clears throat> he appeared to 11 of his disciples, apostles. All right. Apostles. Judas hung himself because he betrayed the Lord for 30 pieces of silver. Man, Judas was the betrayer, so he was excluded from the 11. And man, he took the reward of iniquity. The Bible called it the field of blood. Here Jesus appeared to his disciples after his resurrection. And he is commissioning them. Amen. The same uh, as we look, we don't compare Jesus with Moses. Moses. Moses, after he delivered Israel out of the land of Egypt. Here Moses delivered Israel out of the land of Egypt. E-T-Y-P-T. -E okay. God gave Moses a command to teach Israel his ways. Amen. As the law was given by Moses, grace and truth comes by Jesus. So Israel had to learn the law. When they were under the old covenant, they had to learn the law. That's found in Deuteronomy chapter number four and five. We're going to cover that. Jesus is greater than Moses. Oh, and he has a better testament. It's the it's the testament of grace. So God, Lord, make me a learner. You got to learn what grace is. Grace. The word grace. The Bible says in, in Ephesians chapter two and eight, we are saved by grace through faith. So what is if Christ came with grace? The word grace from the Greek word is charis. It means favor. Literally, it means unmerited favor. God gives you the gift of life based on his on favor. 
And the favor is he, ch he changes you dead in sin. He calls you dead in sin. And he makes you alive as a gift. Alive. <clears throat> That's found in Ephesians chapter number 2. Amen. In Ephesians chapter number 2, it says, uh, let's turn there real quick. Ephesians chapter 2. I'm trying to be led by the Holy Ghost to teach you because I don't know how to teach you. Jesus do. Okay. He says, you has he quickened. This is what you and I were in the past. You as he made alive who were dead, trespasses, and sin. So God has made us alive because of grace. Now, write this down. The word grace is... The word grace... The word grace is unmerited favor. Grace. Unmerited favor. Favors you. God favors you based not on what you could do or what you could earn or your statue of life, or your ethnic background. God has grace on sinners who are dead in trespasses and sin, enemies of him, and he favored you. This is what you got to learn as a believer. Make me a learner. Why am I in this thing? What makes this uh, kingdom of God so important or the being part of Christ's family important? And you got to learn about it. In other words, you got to learn from the one who saved you so you can understand to walk in what he had purposed you to walk in because you're no longer your own, you're bought with the price. Now, Ephesians 2 says, You has he made alive who are dead in trespasses and sin, you were dead. The word dead, you got to learn the word dead in the Greek. You got to find a dictionary to look at the word Greek. It's necros. You were dead. So, I've been, get your strong concordance and look up these words necros. You are dead. The person is dead, is lifeless. You had no life. You had no knowledge of God because you was dead. A person is dead, is lifeless, motionless, insensitive to anything because you're dead. And when you're dead, you're dead. There's no hope for the dead. So what he's, Christ has done, he has made you alive in him. You who could not come to God, God drew you. You didn't. And he didn't, you didn't come to God on your own. You came to God based on his grace, his favor. And because he favored you, you as he made alive, who are dead in trespasses, you got to look, learn what trespasses is. Uh, learn what? Paratoma. The Greek word is paratoma. You are dead. You are dead. You're dead. You learn that. Okay. Necro. Necro. Okay. And trespasses. Okay? It said you were dead in trespasses. What is a trespass? The Greek word is paratoma. Paratoma. Paratoma means that you was you deviated. That is error, willfully error at fault, trespass. In other words, we God is light. And we were born in darkness. David says, I was shaped in iniquity and in sin. My mother conceived me. We as dead, lost in the world, God had quickened us because we were dead in error, walking in our own way, on our way to where? We were on our way, according to Revelation. Revelation, you got to learn that. Revelation is 20, 20, 20 and 12, the lake of fire, the lake of fire. Amen. Uh, it's called Gehenna. Gehenna. G-E-H-E-N-A. Gehenna. That's where the, the God will cast the body, the soul, <clears throat> and the spirit into the lake of fire. This is why the need to learn. You, was on your, you and I were on our way to a Christless eternity into eternal death. Now, I didn't say it. The, the, John the Apostle, John the Baptist said it. So when you read Matthew, the Gospel of Matthew, we look at Matthew. Okay, we'll, uh, we'll turn back here later. Okay, in Matthew, <clears throat> Matthew chapter 3, okay, in those days came John the Baptist preaching the Gospel into the wilderness of Judea, saying, repent for the kingdom of of heaven is at hand. Read verse 3. This is what John said. He, he, he preached the gospel of repentance and he was warning people 
that you got to escape, escape the wrath to come. Look what he says. But this is he that was spoken by the prophet Isaiah, saying, The voice of one crying in the wilderness, Prepare ye way of the Lord, make his path straight. The same John had his remnant and camel hair and his leather girdle about his loins and his food was meat, was locusts and wild honey. And there went out to him all Jerusalem and all Judea and all regions about Jordan. And they were baptized unto him of Jordan confessing their sins. But when he saw the many of the Pharisees and the Sadducees to his, came to his baptism, he said unto them, O generations of snakes. Oh, he called them snakes. That's what we were. We all were snakes, children of the devil. Okay? O generations of vipers. That's verse 7. Who has warned you to flee from the wrath to come? Jesus, at the cross, delivered us from so great of a wrath. That was the purpose of the cross. We got to learn the cross because through Jesus, through Jesus' blood, we escaped the cross. And now because you, are, you, you and I are, are, are on the other side of God's wrath, amen, we escape the wrath because he's made us alive. Because John the Baptist, when 33, <clears throat> three and a half years before uh, the cross that Jesus was put to death, came, came John the Baptist or the tribe of Levi of the Levitical order of the house of Aaron, preparing the people to meet Jesus. And he was warning them that Jesus has come and he's the Lamb of God which taketh away the sins of the world. Not only that, he's the Lamb of God, he is the judge that will judge every human being that ever, that because he is the creator because he is the word. He is the word made flesh. You got to learn that. Jesus is more than a man. According to St. John 1 and 1, he is the word and the word was with God and the word was God and the word was made flesh. Jesus was human and he was divine. As human, he was wrapped in flesh and was put to death on the cross. As divine, he's the eternal God that created the universe. So in Matthew 28, 19, Jesus, the creator and the maker of all things, becoming a man, died on the cross for you and I, who were dead in trespasses and sins. Now he wants us to be a learner. In other words, this is his commission. And this is your position to obey the commission. The commission is God's decree that he wants his people, that he brought out of darkness into light, to know him. To have an intelligent understanding, biblical understanding, rightly dividing the word, understanding the kingdom of God. Everyone that says they're going to heaven are not going to heaven if it's not based on an intelligent understanding of the word of God. In other words, let me give an illustration to you. Jesus says, I am from above. Jesus said, I'm from above in Matthew. Above speaks of God's heavenly domain, where God rules, his heavenly kingdom. Remember Jesus said, when you pray, he said, our Father art in heaven, hallowed be thy name, thy kingdom come, thy will be done in earth as it is in heaven. His will be done is the word will is thalame, thalame, his will. In other words, here's earth. This is the earth. God sent his son from heaven to earth that his thalame, his will may be done to dead people who are dead and lost. That's what you and I are. And the lost people got to know the will of him that sits in heaven. That's what Jesus said. When you pray, you pray our Father, Pater, the word Pater, the Father speaks of our Creator. He is the source of our, of our existence. He is the source. He is the one that made everything and everyone. Amen. He is the source. So God's will in heaven is knowledge, knowledge, understanding. It's not chaos that is down here on earth. In heaven, the power, Satan does not rule heaven. There's no devils, demons, principalities, and powers that can overthrow the kingdom of the living God. The earth is full of satanic control. Satan is called the God of this world. Amen? Now, you got to learn this, child of God, that in Isaiah, Isaiah chapter 14, 
God cast Satan out of heaven because of, of his rebellion. You got to learn that you're in a world that is controlled and dominated by the prince in power of the air, according to Ephesians chapter number six. You got to learn. You can't walk around aimlessly, headless, and expect us that, you know, that God is going to tolerate us based on a assumption and not understanding. Assumption you assuming that you know and never having no understanding biblically and understanding what scripture says about Jesus. So in Matthew chapter 28, it was Jesus' purpose and goal after he resurrected from the grave to commission his apostles to teach everyone that would follow and listen and respond to their words, okay, that they might have a clear understanding about this man called Jesus. Jesus said unto them, as my father sent me, so I send you. In other words, the same authority that he gave, the father gave to the son to preach the gospel and to die and to rise from the dead. Jesus gives that same authority to his apostles. Amen. And his apostles started with the foundation in which the church is built upon, according to Ephesians Bible said we are built upon the foundations of the apostles' doctrine and Christ being the chief cornerstone. He is the head chief over the church. If you say, I'm a believer of the Lord. Oh, I belong to the Lord. Based on what? Based on biblical principles, based on a clear understanding what heaven's mandate is to learn and become a learner. Amen? So, in Matthew chapter 9 and chapter 3, as I told you that we was reading there, here, John the Baptist made it very clear. He said, verse 8, Bring forth therefore fruit meant the repentance. And think that I say, okay, here I go, I say, uh, uh, okay, okay, okay. Now, verse 11, I want you to really understand this. Here, John said, I indeed baptize you with <clears throat> unto water unto repentance. <clears throat> but he that cometh after me is mightier than I, whose shoes I am not worthy to bear, to carry. He shall baptize you with the Holy Ghost and with fire. Holy Ghost is to save people. The Holy Spirit, Jesus is going to baptize, baptize the saved people, the ones that belong to him. He's going to, the ones that belong to him, the Holy Ghost, he baptized those who belong to him, the Holy Spirit. The Holy Spirit if you are born again or belong to Christ, he gives you the Holy Spirit where the Holy Spirit will lead you to knowledge. Jesus said in St. John 14, when he, the spirit of truth, is come, he will lead and guide you into all truth. If you're not led by the Holy Spirit to the word of God, I'd rather, I challenge whether or not you're saved. Your salvation is not based on yes said, uh, saying it. So, uh, salvation is based on action. That there is an active working of power operating you, motivating you to turn from darkness unto light. There are characteristics of a saved, born again, child of God, not based on saying, I believe, I believe, I believe. And there is no manifestation or action in one's life to validate that you belong to Christ. Jesus said, many shall say to me in that day, Lord, I cast out devils in thy name. Lord, I did wonderful works. And Jesus shall profess and say unto them, read it. Depart from me, you workers of iniquity. I never knew you. It is those that respond to the voice of God or those that belong to God. Amen. Know ye not to whom you yield yourself servant, his servant you are to whom you obey, Romans says. The word servant, the Greek word is doulos. I mean, to obey, the Greek word is a koai. It means the, the one you yield yourself to to listen and to respond to, you are a slave to that person. If you belong to Jesus, you are a slave to his will. You are a slave to his word. In other words, he does not have to coerce you or make you. You voluntarily respond to the voice of his word and become a learner. He said, if you, uh, <clears throat> he said, if you continue in my words, you are my disciples indeed. And you will know the truth, and the truth shall make you free. The word disciple, as I stated, is a learner. Is a learner. The significance of learning, 
How can you know a person if you don't learn about them? Learning is, is, is acquiring knowledge. Learning is experiencing knowledge, understanding of the one you do not know. Remember, we were under darkness, controlled by the power of darkness. All we knew was sin and depravity. We didn't know nothing about God's heavenly dominion, God's heavenly will, the holy God, the righteous God. So therefore, God wants us to learn about the one that we have been delivered unto. Amen. He said, I, all the Father give me shall come to me. And him that cometh to me shall no wise cast out. For I came down from heaven not to do my own will, but the will of him that sent me. And this is the Father's will that sent me. That everyone that seeth the Son and believeth in him shall not fall into condemnation, but is passed from death unto life. And because God brought you to the Son, God sent his Son to be the, be the, the payment for your past, present, and future sin, delivering you from the eternal judgment according to Revelation chapter 12. Chapter 20 and 12, I saw the dead, small and great stand before God and, and whose seven name was not written in the book of life was cast into the lake of fire. This is what God has delivered you and I from. He has delivered us from the eternal death because of Jesus. And now God says, while you're here on earth, I want you to learn about my son so you can reproduce the faith of my son because faith cometh by hearing. You cannot produce faith by osmosis. In other words, it does not happen. In other words, you got to learn about him, have understanding about him, whereby the mind can receive information about him who died, who rose from the dead, the eternal God that created everyone and everyone and everyone everyone and everything so therefore so you can develop the faith that is necessary to, to you you and I to receive grace because the Bible said we are saved by grace through faith you got to get faith by learning faith does not come by ignorance by no understanding amen the Bible says the Bible says let me get my Bible real quick can't find it nowhere now. The devil is a lot. Okay, let me get a Bible. I get this one here. The Bible says, the Bible says the people perish for the lack of knowledge. So a lot of people are going to hell. As I stated at one time, I said the reason for Christmas is, is that Jesus came to save us from our sins. He sent Jesus as a savior to deliver us from our sin. But there's a there is a, a prerequisites after he delivered you to respond to his voice. There are prerequisites that you and I must respond to these things that we must obey the Lord God. These prerequisites, the devil is a lie, that you and I must respond to his voice. Jesus said, my sheep hear my voice amen and a stranger they will not follow at any time your flesh tell you don't study the word don't meditate upon the word don't become a learner don't get a bible dictionary get strong concordance that is not from the, the the lord that's from the devil the devil's job and responsibility is in his own world is to blind you that's why he's called the prince of darkness amen now look in the book of colossians how do i know that look at colossians <clears throat> Amen. Colossians chapter number what? Chapter number one. Colossians number one. This is what you got to learn. You got what motivates you to learn is what scripture says, what state God delivered you from. Colossians chapter number one, verse 15, verse 12. Look what it says. He says, giving thanks unto the father, verse 12, who has meat, has made us meet partakers of the saints of the inheritance of the saints in life. We give him thanks, Paul. He said, we thank him the Father who sent his son, who delivered us. The word deliver, delivered, okay? Who has, uh, okay, who has delivered us? Look at the word delivered. You got to learn what that is. Rohomei. Rohomei means to rescue, to, to rush, to draw. God, in due time, rescued you from the eternal judgment. Amen? It don't hit you till you find yourself in the lake of fire. You don't want to get to that state. There's a lot of people that are dead who passed on last year, has passed on today. When you're dead, you're done. There's no hope for the dead. 
The dead know nothing, but the living know they're going to die. Why is it important to know this? It is appointed unto man once to die after this is the judgment. If you are not responding to God's voice while you are alive, there is no hope in the grave. Paul says, I speak to you concerning them that sleep, that you sorrow not even to others that have no hope. If we believe they have no hope. In other words, the dead has no hope. You and I are alive. So while you are alive, it is your responsibility to follow the will of the one that has the power to cast you in hell. Jesus made that statement. Fear not the man that destroyed the body, but fear him that can destroy both body and soul and cast it into Gehenna. The, the day, this generation of believers have no fear of God. We think you can, I'm just born again, I'm a Christian, I go to church when I want to, I study when I want to. There is no fear of God. We must understand that fear is one of the attributes and the characteristics of a child of God to fear God. Jesus had the fear of God on him. The fear is to respond and to recognize his authority as sovereign ruler. Amen. Fear is not to be scared to come to him, to fear what he will do to you. Amen. In other words, God showed his fear to Israel. He said, I brought you out the land of Egypt. I showed you what I did to the Assyrian. I showed you what I did to the Egyptians, excuse me, and all the ones that were your enemies. Now I'm bringing you to this mountain. And I want you to worship me and do not do the ways that you did in Egypt. Do not worship the gods of Egypt. Come out from among them. Be separated, saith the Lord. In other words, when God deliver us, he demands us to obey him and respond to his citizenship in which he brought brought us into. We are citizens of heaven. Heaven is holy. Heaven is righteous. Heaven has not darkness in it. He delivered you out of to bring you into this marvelous way of life. Amen. So this is what he's saying here. He has rescued us from the power of darkness. Who has delivered us from the power of darkness. The authority. Look at it. The power of darkness is talking about the devil. And this word is called exousias. Exousius is the power or the privilege and the influence that he had over us. God had to break us from the power of Satan. Satan rules the entire earth. He is the prince and power of the air. His angels and all of his, his minions rule this earth. The child of God is a pilgrim walking through this earth, living a temporary life here, but your home is in heaven. How do you know this? Paul says your citizenship is in heaven in the book of Philippians. And whence we look for our Lord and Savior, Jesus Christ, who will change our vile bodies that it might be fashioned to his glorious body. In other words, your citizenship is in heaven. You're, you're here on earth to glorify God, but your real home is above. That's why we are born again. The Greek word is anothen. He told Nicodemus, you must be born from above. So if I'm born from above, my home is not down here. My home is above. And why am I down here? Because I was born in sin, shaped in iniquity, and God delivered me from the power of darkness through the faith of his son. Now I'm alive here. And while I'm alive here, I live the life from above down here in my mind, in my attitude, in my conduct, in my character, in my relationship with him. Amen. So he is saying here, look what he said. That, and to prove that is found in Colossians chapter 3. He said, if you then be risen with Christ, set your affections on things above, not here on earth. For you are dead and your life is hid in Christ. In other words, I live the life of heaven, but, I, but even though I have a body that is from this earth, but when I die, absent from the body, present with the Lord. But you cannot live Say you belong to Christ and a citizen of heaven and live a hellish life on earth, walking in your own will and your own way. No, it's not your way. It's his way. That's why he said, thy will be done in earth as it is in heaven. Thy kingdom rule is in the heart, not trying to grab it, snatch it, tap it down here. These prosperity preachers has mess and run amok. The, the, the child of God by ignorant interpreting the word of God. This is not your home. Your home is in Christ Jesus. The kingdom of God is the kingdom of Christ living inside of your body, ruling your mind, ruling your heart. Then when this life is over, you will reign in life in Christ and he's going to burn up this world. For the Bible says the heavens and earth which are now are reserved for fire, for perdition and godly unbelievers and wicked men. He's going to burn this earth and if you 
your love, if you love this world and the things that are in the world, he's going to burn you, burn you up with it and me. If I wish. So therefore, God wants us to be learners so we can understand this great and awesome God that sent his son to die and rescue us from ourselves. He said, giving thanks unto the Father. We in Colossians 1 verse 3. Who has made us meet protectors of the saints of light. Saints of light. We are children of light, not of darkness. We are saints of light. The word saint means he has separated us from our from the from the life of this world. That what saint mean? Saint Hagias. He has separated you for for his own purpose, and you are called the children of the light. Children of the light. We are a candle, amen, of the Lord, whereby we reflect God's life in us, amen. You are not your own. We are a candle. Where God dwells in. That's why you read Revelation chapter 1. The Bible said John looked in the candlesticks. And Jesus said the candlesticks is the church. Where he walks in the midst of it. He is the anointed and the anointed one. Who gives life to the body of Christ. We are his candle. And he is the anointing that anointed us. And if he am anointed by God. He anoint me to study the word of God. Amen. No way in the world you walk in God's anointing and you don't study the word. You're not a learner of God's word. You have no tenacity or veracity or enthusiasm to, enthusiasm to study the word of God. That's, if you don't have that, check yourself before you wreck yourself. Amen. Hallelujah. Check yourself. Wreck yourself. You'll walk in a delusified mindset thinking that you're in, but you're not in. Amen. The manifestations of a child of God is his tenacity to learn. Jesus said, my sheep hear my voice. My sheep responds to my voice. The word voice, it speaks of running to the voice of the Savior. Amen. It runs to the voice, not run from it. Amen. Jesus said, come unto me, all ye that labor and heavy laden, and I will give you rest. You run to the voice of the Savior. You run to the one that created the universe. That's why he's called the Word. He's, he's the Word of God. He's the voice that Adam and Eve ran from. He's the voice that God created the worlds from. Now God sent Jesus to draw us to the light of knowledge so we can walk in a learning mind, learning way. So we can understand this magnificent God. He said, giving thanks to the Father who has made us qualified meat partakers of the saints of light, who has rescued us from the power of darkness and has translated us into the kingdom of his dear son. So he, he rescued us from the power of darkness. Uh, he has made us an inheritance of the saints of light. He has delivered us from the power of darkness. That's Satan. The word darkness, you got to learn, is skotos. Skotos. Darkness. Satan is called the prince of darkness, the prince and power of the air. Now, let us show you uh, what God is going to do for Satan and those that follow him. Amen. Now, look, look at Revelation chapter and Revelation chapter 20. This is why you, you want to learn. You don't want to obey God. How do you know you're obeying God? Amen. Look at Revelation chapter 20. Hallelujah. Chapter 20, verse 10. And the devil that deceived them, look at that. And the devil, he, see, Satan is, you got to learn, his name is called Satan. His name is called the devil. Amen. He is called the serpent. He is called the dragon. Amen. These are, he has many aliases. And this is the Satan, the devil, the serpent, the dr dragon. This is what Christ delivered us from, the power of the devil. The devil is an angel. Amen. We walk around as though the devil don't exist. That's the greatest trick that he has done to the body of Christ. We don't have no knowledge of the devil. Amen. You got to learn in Isaiah chapter 14, Ezekiel chapter 28, and of course, uh, Genesis chapter number 3. When the serpent beguiled the woman, deceived her, that snake talked to the woman. She ate the fruit, and what happened? All of us in a world of crap. We die because what Satan did to Eve, eating the fruit, and he deceived her, blinded. And the Bible said, in this very day, he has blinded the minds of many people. The Bible said, if our gospel is hid, it is hid to them that are lost, whom the God of this world has blinded the minds of them that believe not. Who's the God of this world? His name is Satan. His name is the devil. His name is the serpent. He is called the dragon. Amen. 
And Revelation goes into detail once the church is raptured up, how he's going to raise havoc upon the earth. Now look at Revelation. Hallelujah. Turn to Revelations chapter. Now let's read this. And the devil that deceived them, that's where he's going, was cast into the lake of fire and brimstones where the beast and the false prophet are and shall be tormented day and night forever and ever. This is what God has rescued us from. Why the devil want to blind you? Why the devil don't want you to study? Why he don't want you to be a learner? He can, you can memorize scripture, but do you learn? Has he revealed the word to you? Have your mind have understanding? Amen. Quoting scripture is no, will not help you. You got to understand what they mean and contents and verses. You got to be a student of God's word and you have to have a good teacher to help you. Amen. You can't be full of pride and self-centeredness and God, you, you, it, it will cause you to go straight to hell. The perish, the people perish for the lack of knowledge. So anyway, in other words, we learn about the devil that God delivered us from. Jesus, the Bible said, delivered us from the, the father delivered us from the power of darkness. That's another name for Satan. He's called the, he is darkness. When you're the blind, lead the blind, blind, they fall in the ditch. When you're blind, you're walking in darkness. You cannot see. Satan's job is to blind your mind to the word of God so you cannot understand it and you're dying your sins. It's too late. Many testimony says when people die, they fall into darkness. Why you can't go to light if you are wicked? Because you live the life of darkness is only suited for you to go to darkness. Amen. So if you die without Christ, you can have a heart attack, you can run over by a car, you can eat the wrong food. It's so easy for us to die. That's why you can't be playing around with your life. You got one soul, child of God. So you use, you use your time that God has given you wisely. Amen? And what is the time? Learn about him so you don't burn. We learn here that the devil that deceived them was cast into the lake of fire and shall be tormented day and night forever and ever. As we keep on reading, let us read on. And I saw the dead. I saw a great white throne. I saw a great white throne. And him that sat upon it, whom the face of the earth and the heavens fled away, and there found no place for them. He has given us heads up, learn this, that in the future, amen, that many children will try to run from this. They're going to run. And, in heaven, and, can, and there will be no place found for them. Look what it says. To the unlearned, don't know, you're ignorant. I saw the dead, a great white throne. And him that sat upon it, who was the face of the earth and the heavens fled away, and there found no place for them. Look what the Bible says. You got to learn this. I saw the dead, small and great. You're dead, you're not done. When people die, they still, they has left their bodies. They're still around. They are absent from the body. Whether you're in hell or heaven, you're absent from the body. So it is, it is not when you die. It's how you die. If you die without Christ, your body goes to back to the material world. you got to learn that. And, and, amen. And the spirit goes up or down. Heaven or hell. That's what you got to learn. Amen. So why do you need to learn it? Because you, you are understanding about the consequences of not being in Christ. There's consequences of walking in darkness. We see God reveals to us that Satan, the devil, was cast into the lake of fire. Then he said, I saw the dead, small, and great stand before God. I saw that, verse 12, I saw the dead, small, and great. I don't care if you're president or pauper, rich or poor, free and bond, queen or king, entertainer, or whatever you may be, everyone who is not born again, is not saved by the blood of Jesus, will stand before Jesus and will give an account for they, what they have done in that body. You learn what God says so you can avoid what's coming. That's why this is the motivating factor of learning. You learn what God has said about himself so you can avoid what's coming. Whether you say, I don't believe that hogwash, well, go ahead. No, matter of fact, you, you cannot change what God has already said, no matter how you huff and puff. God is able to blow you down, amen? Because he has the power to brought you into the world. He has the power to take you out. 
And the Bible said, is appointed unto man once to die. After this is the judgment. Death is sure. Your millions, your billions. I don't care if you're 100. Barbara Waters passed away. God bless her soul. Millionaires passed. Billionaires passed. But people pass away. You cannot. You came into the world naked. You're going to leave naked. And because you leave the world, you go and they put you in a casket or cremate you, you still will come back alive again and stand before your creator. Amen. Hallelujah. Whether you believe it or not. And this is what reveals to us what God has said. So God reveals to the child of God. But these things were written for our admonition. The, when the Bible said whatsoever was written was written through our, for our learning. That we through the patience and comfort of the scriptures might have hope. But the per people perish err not knowing the scriptures or the power of God. It's time in 23 for us to become a learner of the word and quit playing the game of Christianity. If you're going to be, if you're a follower of God, learn about him. If you're a follower of Christ, learn your master. Jesus, for three and a half years, he did more teaching than he did miracles. They was called him Rabboni, teacher, teacher, teacher. Come and see. He taught them. He sat down and taught the multitudes. Then he taught them in parable. You got the audacity and unmitigated God to say I belong to Jesus and don't even study the word of God and don't have no desire to study the word. I question whether or not you belong to God. It's all about halitosis, mafitosis, running off with the mouth and have no substance on the inside that, that proves to you that's why Paul said, examine yourself whether you are in the faith. I'm not preaching at you. I'm trying to teach you and try to bring light where the devil is trying to put darkness. He knows where he's going. He's trying to snatch us and bring us back into darkness. Why? Because Paul said the devil, who is our adversary, walketh about as a roaring lion seeking whom he may devour. The devil... Paul warns us to put on the entire armor of God that we might stand against the methodia or the ways of the devil. Amen. So therefore, it's my responsibility as an apostle, as a teacher, as a prophet to expose to you clear instructions for the child of God who will listen to this to become a student and a learner of God's word. And quit playing the game of 22, the game of 21, the game of 20, back in the past, forgetting those things which are behind you and reach for the things which are before you. Press toward the mark of the prize of the high calling of God that is in Christ Jesus. In other words, forget what you did in the past and start building new foundations of learning. Amen. Get rid of the quacks, the false prophets, the, the motivational speakers, the psychologists and all these other quacks whom God is going to throw in hell because they have, they have perverted the gospel with humanistic religious concepts that is contrary to biblical principles. Amen. God does not need no help from no man, no uh, philosopher, psychologist or anybody else uh, contrary to what God sent his apostles. Amen. He already laid the foundation. We are built upon the apostles and prophets. And Jesus Christ is the chief cornerstone. He is the head of the church. He is the founder of the church. He is the Lord of the church. He is the God of the church. He is the supreme ruler of the church. If you follow me, the Bible says, follow me as I follow Christ. Forget about the quacks and learn the test and don't trust. Amen. You don't trust nobody till you become a learner. If you can't test it, don't trust it. It's time to awake thou that sleep and rise from the dead that Christ might give us light in the midst of a wicked and pervert generation. Hallelujah. We see today our ignorant leaders, even in Congress, can't even vote a speaker of the house. Crazy deals, swindlers and quacks, idiots. Our country is progressively diminishing. And God said, you better, you better wrap yourself and tie yourself in the supreme commander of the universe. So when that day come, you won't be ashamed and walk in your nakedness. For he said, behold, I come quickly and my reward is with me to give every man according to his work. We don't preach a weak Jesus. We speak the God of power. When Jesus said, all power is given unto me in heaven and in earth. He's the one that rules this universe. And you and I got to stand before him and give an account of what you have not learned and what you should have learned and what you have premeditated to intentionally neglect it. Amen. Take responsibility on your learning. And I'm here to able to help you get you some 
dictionaries, get some concordias and look up these words, rightly dividing the word. We are under the New Testament, the new agreement. We are not under the law of rituals and, and things that are uh, uh, what Moses says. You got to know the difference between the old and the new. Uh, being spirit filled, spirit born, spirit inspired. Amen. How to walk in the power of the Holy Ghost. How to renew your mind. How to be transformed by the renewing of your mind. Understand how to, when you fall into sin, how to get back up again. And for somebody to judge you and say, oh, God has left you. He fell down with you in your mess. And if you learn what faith is, you get up in faith. If you go down, get up in faith. And, so, and get back into the race. God has not left you when you make mistakes in your Christian journey. Amen. And when you learn this, you won't be caught up in, in people's in church religion. I don't go to that church no more because they, they do this. Quit going to buildings and go to the word of the living God. Amen. That building is not the church. The church belongs to Christ. The church is a living organism where the spirit of God dwells in. Your body is the temple of the living God. Collectively, the church is the living body of, uh, uh, of believers where his spirit dwells in. Not the building. We come to gather in a building to receive information. But we make the building more holy than the people that, that occupy the seat. The church is, the, is that man, that woman, that black child, white child, green child, whatever ethnic background you may be. He said, go into all the world and preach the gospel to every creature where he dwells in. When he told Peter, upon this rock I build my church, he's not talking about a building. He's talking about a living organism where his spirit lives inside your body and he dwells in. He lives in your mind. God has made a covenant with your mind. He writes his law in your thinking. He, he has washed you in his blood and separated you from the world and made you his family and called you to be a son of God and part of his royal dominion. Amen. And therefore, he don't want you to walk around ignorant and fall and yield to the commander in chief of your soul. I am not your commander. I'm a servant. I'm a slave to the one that made everyone in, in every place. Hallelujah. 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 So here the devil, he wants you and I to go here. I saw a great white throne. And him that sat upon it, whom the face of the heaven and earth fled away, and there found no place for them. They ran, they cannot hide. You don't want to be caught in this situation. And I saw the dead, small and great, stand before God. And the books were open, and another book is open, which is the book of life. And the dead was judged out of those things which are written in those books according to their works. And the sea gave up the dead which were in it. Death and hell delivered the dead which were in them. And they were judged every man according to their works. You work like, you act like the devil, you're going to go to hell like the devil. Satan, serpent, that old dragon, he want to blind us to walk in his ways. If you walk in his ways, you are his children. The Bible said he didn't commit the sin is of the devil. He that practice habitually sinning, sinning, sinning. There's no uh, repercussions in your thinking. There's no sensitivity of God. Just do it and say it and have no conscience of it. You don't belong to God. If, you, if, a, if a Christian sin, he, the Holy Spirit comes to reprove you. He don't leave you. Jesus said when the spirit of truth is coming, you got to learn that. Uh, St. John chapter 14. When God comes inside of you, he leaves the sin nature there, but he's still on the inside. The difference between a Christian sinner and a, and a sinner who don't, don't have Christ, when a Christian sin, Christ stays in you, but he, he's he going to whoop you till you say, I, I repent. He's going to whoop you till you obey the word. If a sinner sin, he going to whoop him because he don't belong to him. Only those that belong to Christ. So the difference between a sinner and a, and a saint, a saint has Christ on the inside. And then when they fall, he gets them back up. He don't leave you, according to St. John 14. When he, the spirit of truth, will come, he'll lead, guide you into all truth. He will reprove the world of sin, meaning that we sin because we have a sin nature. We got to know the difference. Oh, people say, when I, go, when, I, when I get right with God, then I go to church. You'll never get right with God. You'll find yourself in hell. Come as you come in faith, then you fall down, get back up again. How many times you fall down? I don't care with a thousand times. Keep getting back up in faith. Amen. Keep, your, keep plugged into faith and God will constantly renew you. I mean, I, I've been in the ministry uh, in Christ since I was 18. I'm almost 67 years old. The Lord's will next month. I've been in the Lord. Amen. I'm going to say I, I went walking that straight line. I did all that. I'm a liar. No. I've, I mean, we sin every day. We have a sin nature. But God has given us the understanding that the spirit of truth will always 
renew you, give, give you the power to wake up. Confess your sins to him. He is faithful and just to forgive you. If you, know, if you don't learn the way of sanctification, and then when you get in trouble, you think that God has left you because you're messed up. How, well, this is what I'm saying. If you're ignorant, you say, oh, you're throwing the towel and quit. Because you don't know the way of sanctification. You don't know the way of the kingdom of God because you're ignorant. You go to these religious groups, these Pentecostal hypocrites, apostolic hypocrites, your holy and thou hypocrites, they put on a show with a Batman suit, but they're inwardly full of dead man bones. So in other words, as a learner, you know that you're on a journey and we have a sin nature. And if you fall down, you get up in faith. You got in in faith, you keep in by faith. Amen. In other words, Paul said, all have sinned and come short of the glory of God. We are saved by grace through faith. You got to maintain your faith to maintain your sanctification as a learner. So in other words, when you learn this, you don't let nobody sway you when you make a mistake. I don't care. It's fornication, adultery, hatred, jealousy, strife, envy, drunk, murder, whatever it may be. He died to rescue us from our sins. And he says, if you have faith, he'll never remember your sins no more. You got to know the covenant. You learn the new covenant and understand what is your rights in the new covenant. If you don't become a learner, you don't know your rights. When the devil said you didn't cut somebody out after driving a car, blip, 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 blip. And at first I thought you were saved. Well, I am saved. This part ain't saved. Amen. If you don't come to know that, you'll think that God has left you. God does not leave. Oh, God does not dwell in an unclean temple. I guess he don't dwell in you, but he dwells in me. The Bible says all have sinned and come short. We are saved by grace through faith. If you don't learn this, people will trap you and think that you are not saved based on their own stupid and ignorant opinion. You cannot live off the learn ignorant opinions. You got to become a Bible student to understand how does God deal with the sins of commission and the sins of omission. The sins that I commit and the sin, things I omit that I know I should have done. Am I still covered in the blood? Yes, you are. If you have no learning and knowledge of it, you will find yourself entrapped in ignorance. Now, the God don't want you to live a life a habitual hormogen, a, hom a habitual liar. So, in other words, God will whoop you till you say yes if you belong to Him. Amen? Whom the Lord loveth, He chasteneth. You gotta understand how God chasteneth us to those that belong to Him. You gotta learn this. You gotta be orientated and understand it in the ways of God. But nobody can make you learn. You gotta want to learn. I can be, I'll be a learner. Oh, you're going to hell. You gotta take responsibility in your own soul. I am doing my part as a teacher to let you be aware that God wants you to learn, uh, to be a learner. You can put, put it, you can close your ears. I don't want to hear that like you did last year and year before that. But I'm telling you, our time is running out. The day of the Lord is coming. And he's going to come, come and everybody's draws are down and he'll show you all your nakedness and it's too late. Like the ten virgins. Five are foolish, five are wise. When the, when the bridegroom came, those have already went into the marriage. Read Matthew chapter 25. Foolish and wise. We got foolish saints and wise saints in the kingdom of God. I pray to God that you become wise and become a learner. Hallelujah. And because why? These people who are in this situation in Revelation chapter 20 and 13, and the sea gave up the dead which are in them. And death and hell delivered the dead which are in them. And they judge every man according to their works. Look at 14. This scares the heck out of you. And death and hell was cast into the lake of fire. This is the second death. And whosoever was not found written in the book of life was cast into the lake of fire. Amen. Now, Jesus told me to t tell you this. In the last chapter of Revelation, he said, tell them this. This is what he's told me because the word of the Lord came to my mind. He said, he, he said, tell them this. Verse 7. Behold, I come quickly. Blessed is he that keep the sayings of the prophecy of this book. This is Jesus. And I, John, saw these things and I heard them. Okay, what I want to hear, let's see. And I, John, saw these things and heard them. And when I heard them and seen, I fell down and worshiped the angel at the feet of the angel that showed me these things. Then he said unto me, See thou doest not, for I am thy fellow servant and thy brethren and thy prophet and them which keep... Keep the sayings of this book. 
worship God. You want to be a worshiper of God, be a learner. Amen? And he says unto me, Set up not the sayings of this prophecy book, for the time is at hand. Look at verse 11. But he that is unjust, he said, go on being unjust. He that, he that is filthy, he said, be filthy. Let him be filthy still. He that is righteous, let him be righteous still. He that is holy, let him be holy still. Regardless of all that, look at the verse in the red. Behold, I come quickly. I'm coming. Whether you respond to the voice of the prophet of the apostle, whether you say, I don't care that, I heard that before, I don't want to hear it no more. He said, okay, go on and fold your hand, do, do your do, do you. I, I, I'm going to do me. Go do you. Okay, amen. And God goes, hey, you're going to do you, but I'm going to do you too. Behold, I come quickly, and my reward is with me to give every man according to his works. Oh, my God. Behold, I come quickly, and my reward is with me to give every man according to his works shall be. I am Alpha and Omega, the beginning and the end, the first and the last. Blessed are they that do his commands. He commanded us to be learned. He commanded them, Matthew 28, 9, go into all the world and make learners. God commands you right now in the, in the presence of the God and in the presence of our Lord Jesus Christ. He commands you right now to be a learner. Blessed are they that they do his commands that they may have right to the tree of life. Amen? Have right to the tree of life. To enter through the gates of the city. You're not going to my city, don't be a learner. You're not going to my city being an ignorant baboon. You're not going to my city being a fool. The fool that said in his heart, there is no God. You're not going to my city, you don't know what is my will. Amen? Jesus is an is a, is a intelligent or, and, and, and has articulated his will. If you choose not to learn, it's on you. He says this, Blessed are they that do his commandments. They may have right to the tree of life. Jesus said, If any man love me, he'll keep my words. And my Father will love him, and we will come into him and make our bonds. Keep my commands that you might live. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Blessed are they that do his commands. My charges. Look at the word command. In totally. My precepts. Not the Ten Commandments. Not the law. The law of faith. You got to know the command he's referring to. His commandments, not the Ten Commandments, not the rules of the law of works. It's the commandments to be a faith or a truster. To trust in the Lord with all your heart and lean not to your own understanding. And all thy ways acknowledge him. He'll direct your path. The fear of the Lord is to depart from evil. To learn his word of God and to let him rule your heart and mind. When he, the spirit of truth, will come, he'll lead and guide you into all truth. He will not lead you to everything but the word. He'll lead you to the word to be a student of the word. He'll lead you to your dictionary. He'll lead you to understand what this, uh, this difficult Bible, he'll bring you to the knowledge of the word. He'll teach you to, to get a library of Bible study and so you can be a Bible learner. Not just talking to talk and not walking to walk. Amen. God is tired of the talkers. He wants the walkers who respond to his voice. Amen. Ever learning and never learning. Every year he is tired of saying, he said about to spew you out of his mouth. Amen. Either you're cold or you're hot. If you're lukewarm, I'm going to vomit you out your mouth. Read Revelations chapter 2 and 3. His, 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 uh, his uh, indictment to the church. The church belongs to him. He said he talked about them leaving his first love. He talked about standing at the door and knock. If any man hear my voice and open up, I will come into him and sup with him and him with me. It is my, not my instructions. Jesus said, he didn't receive as you receive as me. And he that rejects you, reject, reject me. Not me, Christ. Study his word and respond to Christ if he's your Lord. Amen? Why call me Lord, Lord, and do not the things that I say? Why call me Lord and not respond to my voice? Why call me Lord when you don't obey what I say? If a man obey me, this is the one that loved me. If any man loved me, he'll keep my words. Not talking to talk. Lord, I'm trying. I want to do what your word say. Follow instructions intelligently. Not be a it's wild and crazy and have no understanding. Hallelujah. Ever learning and never learning. Excuse me. Saints of God. I'm trying to get this camera right. Hallelujah. 
never learning and never coming to the knowledge of the truth. We preach loudly to stimulate, to motivate you, not to harder to be mean. Amen? Blessed are they that do his commands, that they might have right to the tree of life. I want to enter through the gates of the city. I don't want to enter through the gates of hell. Amen? Jesus said, this, upon this rock, Matthew 16 and 16, I build my church and the gates of hell shall not prevail. There's a lot of folks, the wicked is going to the gates of hell. There's the gates of hell. You don't want to go there. And there's a gate to the city of heaven. That's what he says. Enter through the gates of the city. Amen. Now, in Matthew 16, he said the gates of hell will not prevail against the church if you belong to him. What's the gates of hell? That's the underworld. A lot of folks in the underworld. A lot of people are dying and going to the underworld. You can put all the marble caskets and all the oak wood, that body. There's nobody in that body. The spirit has left the body. Elvis has left the building. When you die, you give up the ghost. The spirit goes to the underworld or go to heaven. That's the gates of hell. Then out of hell, he judges you and you got to give an account. For, your, for my negligence or incompetence not responding to his word. You become a learner so you can respond to the voice that made the universe. Adam refused to obey God. And God is calling his voice to his church. It's time to you obey me. Obey the one that brought you into this world. And has the power to take you out. All souls are mine. And the souls are your father. But the soul that sinneth, he said, it shall die. Amen. He is the one that created your soul. He is the power to take you out of here. You're not the boss. I'm not the boss. He's the boss. Amen. For without our dogs, there's two dogs in the church. False prophets and sorcerers in the church. Whoremongers in the church. Murderers. Idolaters. Whosoever loveth to make a lie. I, Jesus, have sent my angel to testify unto you these things. In the churches, the church is the outcalled one. Learn this. Make me a learner, Lord. You are outcalled. God called you out of darkness. He is talking to the church. He that has ears, let him hear what the Spirit says to the church. Amen. Hallelujah. I'm just an instrument of what he says. Read it yourself and you can respond. Well, a man wrote that, but you're an ignorant thing. You're crazy. You believe every other book. Don't believe this book. This has stood the test of time. I, Jesus, have sent my angel to testify you things in the churches. I am the root, not spring of David, the bride and the morning star. And this is an invitation. And the spirit and the bride say, come. And let him that heareth say, come. Let him that a thirst come. And whosoever will let him come and take the water of life freely. You got to finish reading all the rest of it. You got to read the, the small print. If you're coming, you're coming to obey. He's going to read that. I'm coming to the Lord. Pray to the Lord. And don't obey. To obey is to run to the voice of the one that speaks. You obey and be obedient to him. Obedient is you say no to self, yes to him. No to self. If any man come after me, let him deny himself. Take up his cross and follow me. You're on the cross to die to yourself. you got to be learn to be transformed by the renewing of your mind. We are enemies in our mind by wicked works. you got to learn that the worst enemy is yourself. I. Amen. Not I, but Christ. We die to self that Christ might transform us in the image of his son. That's what you become. Any man in Christ is a new kind of creation. The old things are passed away. Behold, all things become new. You as we know it today, flesh and blood will not inherit the kingdom of God. We're walking around in Disneyland thinking we assume we have a relationship and have no relation with, with, with an intelligent relationship with the Word. All that crapping and talking and, and nobody studying, you got preachers popping up like popcorn, have no learning, have no understanding, have no comprehension, have no revelation, cannot write and divide the Word, yet they call themselves preachers, and yet there's a bunch of popcorn popping and God's going to pop them off the earth. Amen. How do you can't trust nobody? You trust, say, Lord, let me get, let me set my rotten butt down and get some found, foundational study and learn this stuff. Learn the history of, you can start with Acts chapter number one. Learn the history of the church in Acts. Learn Romans. Get you an Amplified Bible. Get you an expanded Bible. Get you a living Bible. And learn verse by verse. Get you a strong concordance. 
You know, it's not man's interpretation. It's not a personal interpretation. All scriptures are given by inspiration. God breathed. It's not a private interpretation. I don't interpret the word of God my way or your way. It, it should be a universal answer. All saying the same thing. If you want somebody saying this, somebody saying this, that's confusion. Then we might be fitly gathered together in one. That was Ephesians chapter 4. Knitted together that we would not be tossed to and fro by every wind of doctrine. But you get all these fly-by nights, come on the scene, money mongers, deceiving God's people. And the time is, if you don't want to be deceived, if you think you don't have to learn, you're deceived already. You've been tricked by the enemy. The spirit and the bride say come. Let him that a thirst say come. And let him a thirst come. And whosoever will let him come and take the water of life freely. Amen. Now, for I testify to every man that heareth the words of this prophecy, this book. If any man shall add unto these things, God shall add these plagues that are written in these books. God is that playing with the book. He add. If any, if any man preach any other gospel, how do you, do you know the gospel? You got to test a person by what the words say. Amen. God gonna add plagues to them. If any man should take away from the words of this book prophecy of this book shall take away his part. God shall take away his part out of the book of the life and out of the holy city and the things that are written in this book. He that testified these things said, surely I come quickly. Amen. Even so come Lord Jesus. The grace of our Lord Jesus Christ be with you all. Amen. Now let's go back to our foundational scripture. Amen. Matthew. Matthew. Chapter 28, we're going to start in, I think, 15. Look at this. Then his disciples went away into Galilee into a mountain where Jesus had appointed them. Verse 17. When they saw him, they worshipped him. They worshipped Jesus, not man, but some doubted. Look at verse. This is Jesus talking. And Jesus came and spake unto them, saying, All power, all authority is given unto me in heaven and in earth. If Jesus got all power in heaven and earth, he has power to he has power over every devil, demon that will attack you. He has power every, over everyone. Amen. All power, the word power, amen, exousius, authoritative power, ability, influence, amen, is given to me in heaven and in earth. Go ye therefore and teach. Look what he said. The word teach is Matthusia. Matha Matthew. Matthew. It means make a disciple. A disciple to enroll, to instruct. One translation is to cram in knowledge. M, let me, let's look at the word. The translation, the word is what? M A Math. M A Math E T E U O. Amen. Mathetio, it means to be a what? Disciple. A disciple to enroll. To enroll in school, you enroll, have no problem enrolling in college, have no, role, have no problem going to a trade school, you, you enroll to learn. God said, make, enroll them into educational learning. Amen? To cram in knowledge, okay? All power is given to me in heaven and earth. Go ye therefore and make learners of all nations, baptizing them in the name of the Father, Son, and the Holy Ghost. Teaching. Di Didasco. 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 Teaching them. It means to teach, to instruct, to be taught. Amen? Teaching them what? Teaching them to observe all things observe. What observe? Yeah, look at the word observe. T-E-R-O. T-E-R-E-O. T-E-R-E-O. It means... Okay, it's a military time, a military line. I mean, to take custody, to detain, to watch, be a keeper, to hold, 
to preserve. Amen? To teaching them to preserve the information, which you get, keep it. Amen? Teaching them to observe all things, to preserve it, all things, all things whatsoever I command you, and lo, I am with you always, even to the ends of the world. I'm with you. Now, you will never understand this verse until you read Luke. Because Matthew version is the life of Jesus after his resurrection. But Luke goes into more detail. Luke chapter number 24. Luke 24. Look at Luke 24. Okay. Let's go here. Uh, look at Jesus says in Luke. Then Jesus said unto them, O fools, slow of hearing, slow of heart. Believe not all that the prophets have spoken. This is after his Christ's resurrection. Ought not Christ to suffer these things and enter into his glory? And beginning at Moses, Jesus taught his disciples. Beginning at Genesis, all the way to Malachi. 39 books of the Old Testament, Jesus explained, expounded. Beginning at Moses and all the prophets, verse 27, you got it, he expounded. The word expounded, diaramino, to explain, he explained thoroughly. Okay, expounded, interpreted. Look at that word, D, you got to be alert, I, E, R M E N E U O. You have your dictionary, you can look it up yourself. In the strong accordion, it's 1329. Daramino. It means to interpret, explain, expound, to translate. The Holy Spirit got to bring light to your mind to understand the scriptures. And you, he will not help you if you're not a learner. When the spirit of truth is come, Jesus said in Matthew, St. John 14, he will lead and guide into all truth. He will take a mind and show it to you. When he, the spirit of truth, Aletheia, the spirit of truth shall come. The paracletus, the guider, the comforter. you led by the spirit of God, then you are sons of God. You're not led by the spirit of God to learn. That's not the spirit of God, it's the spirit of the devil. That's the spirit of error. Notice he said here. Okay, and beginning at Moses and all the prophets, he expounded unto them in all scriptures the things concerning himself. Now look at another verse, verse 44. Verse 38, and he said unto them, why do you trouble? Why do your thoughts arise in your hearts? Behold my hands and my feet, that it is I. And you read Matthew. Acts chapter 1, the Bible said he was with his disciples 40 days. 40 days after his resurrection. 40 days teaching. He was teaching his disciples. We can't even stand, we can't stand 40 minutes to learn the word. He was 40 days teaching his disciples. We're not exempted. You and I are not exempted. We've got to be a learner. Look what he says. Behold my hands and my feet, that is, it is I, myself. Handle me, for you see a spirit has not flesh and bones as you see I have. And when he had thus spoken, he showed them his hands and his feet. And while they yet believed not for joy, he, and wondered, he said unto them, have you any meat? He was, very, he was validating that when, Jesus, when they saw his disciples, the leaven, saw Jesus after his resurrection, he came to teach us that this thing happened. This is an event that it really happened. And God is not playing with us. The time is winding up. We better believe and respond to his voice. And they gave him a piece of boiled fish, verse 42, and of a honeycomb. And he took it and did eat before them, verse 44. And he said unto them, These are the words which I have spoken to you while yet with you, that I all things must be fulfilled which, was, which is written. Which is written what? In the book. If you don't know the book, you don't know what is written. Jesus goes by the book. He's going to judge you by what you know in the book. In the book of the law of Moses and all the prophets and the Psalms, 
concerning me. Look what he says. And he opened their understanding of their minds that they might understand the scriptures. God got to open your mind. He ain't going to open your mind being disobedient. I'm going to stop right here. I pray that you get a, a little bit of light here. The Lord Jesus, make me a learner. Open my mind. Open my heart. Help me, Lord, in the name of Jesus. God bless you in Jesus' name.